Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, friends, readers, listeners, and viewers from all across the world. I appreciate you joining me for another uh, Sabbath broadcast as we try to uh, bring to you the truth which has been largely overlooked and uh, ignored by a a lot of what are the mainstream teachers, um, preachers, ministers out there that have not looked into the full summation of what is available as far as the um, the text, the extra biblical text, and I know uh, a lot of people are opposed to looking into or seeking out truth when um, when it's not based on the Old or New Testament or the canon of the what are the eighty books, uh, including the original apocrypha, but. Um, it's my opinion that, of course, we do absolutely must have a foundation for truth built upon the canon, 
uh, and that certainly all of us need to focus and to place our time in researching and studying and understanding uh, what is available as far as the scope and the context of the word and the gospel as preached and as taught by uh, those particular books. But it is also my opinion that for those that are seeking out detail and that want to know uh, and learn about, you know, from other sources that are maybe not, you know, canonical, but definitely authoritative in their teaching and um, in in what they bring forth, then, you know, it, again, it's my opinion that w we should, uh, if you want to know more uh, about what hasn't been written or what has been left out or what has been purposely stripped away from you, kept hidden. Because um, a lot of information has been purposely kept hidden and, and kept away and stolen from us as uh, a body of students, uh, disciples of, of Christ and the Word and of the Father and that they can, uh, especially for those that have relationship with the Father and the Son and that are, are seeking to expand and to broaden your horizons in such way. Um, my, again, my opinion, I believe that they certainly, most definitely, can assist one in coming to know the true character of our Lord and King and to assist you to coming into relationship with the Creator and with the creation and to bring one to remembrance on who they are and why they're here and what all of this is all about. And so I appreciate those of you that do, you know, appreciate my work and, and that I do embrace studying all things because I'm like a criminal investigator. I want to uh, study all aspects of what has been released to us because, um, you know, we we know with the word that the Father said that in the last days that he would certainly pour out his spirit upon all flesh and that those things which have been hidden since the foundations of the world that they would become accessible and that that knowledge would be given to us. But we also have responsibility in doing the work and doing, putting forth effort to come to know what those secrets are. And so that to me means that we must study and certainly the father and the son will guide us in that discernment and lead us to truth. And he will also let us know and give us the conscience to understand what aligns with the gospel and with the foundation of the Old and the New Testament and what doesn't. Because certainly anything that denies Christ or denies Yahuwah or, or, you know, speaks against the Holy Spirit that those things are antichrist, no matter who wrote them or, you know, from what era or what time period uh, they are from. But there are a lot of things, even in in this, you know, with us being the last generation, there are massive bodies of work that are just now becoming to light that I feel that the Father has allowed them to come to light and um uh, specifically referencing the Dead Sea Scroll collection and also the Nakamati collection, which were found in 40, 1946 and 1947 with, you know, the soon um, founding of the nation of Israel, the second uh, founding of the nation of Israel, which is a sign for those that understand prophecy and that have looked deeply into the word 
that was a sign for our generation that we truly are in the end of days and that it would be this generation that would see the second coming of the Son of Man. As referenced in uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 as the parable of the fig tree. And we're commanded in those three passages with those various scriptures to know the parable of the fig tree like it is not a choice that if we are disciples of Christ in the word, that we are to understand what that parable signifies and what it means because it is very important for our generation and it's a sign of where we are. And so, uh, and for those that are more interested, especially for the new listeners, because we have a lot of them, um, I've done uh, shows in the past on the parable of the fig tree specifically and have expounded upon what that means from various texts, not only the, you know, the canon, but also the extra biblical references which are connected in uh, and parallel that particular teaching to bring forth the fact and to connect uh, that prophecy with what happened in 1947 with the United Nations bringing forth the commandment to restore Israel as a nation. And even though, uh, you know, that was done by the United Nations, which is basically a strong arm for the elitist and representative of, you know, of the New World Order and the power structure that is pushing for world government, the Father does not allow anything to be done unless it fulfills his purposes. And so even though we know that the rulers of Israel, that they are Zionists and that they're connected to the globalists and the banksters, and that's one of the reasons why they fly the pentagram on their flag, uh, it is still out of the will of the Father that all things happen. And so it was a fulfillment of the prophecy of the fig tree. And so I also want to uh, just honor all the mothers of the world, all the females of the world that out of their caring, out of their gentleness, their empathy, uh, that they have cared for you know, the children of the world and that have brought forth all the generations of people and, and goodness and tenderness and mercy that have uh, dedicated your lives and your time and, and your focus into raising children uh, as best as you can with what has been available to you. And I know that, um, that, a lot of times the cultures, the societies, and the peoples of the world do not honor, you know, the mothers in such a way that, because um, we should certainly, I mean, you should be rewarded for the things that you do. And a lot of times uh, those things, the the way that you give of yourself and put your children first, uh, first and raise, you know, the the children of the world. Uh, you you're not honored and it's overlooked and it's not appreciative. Uh, they don't consider that as a job. Um, uh, and and certainly it's the most important job. And without you, uh, we would have never have even made it to where we are now. Uh, and that being said. Um, it's amazing to me that because I um, have have labeled and listed this show months back um, before even I began the series on the end of days, and it just happened to line up with you know Mother's Day coming up um, uh, on the twelfth, and and it's uh, tomorrow even, and so. 
uh, it's amazing to me how the Father, you know, allows things like that to happen. And so on this show, I'm going to be honoring uh, the mother of our Lord and helping people to understand her story as well as the story of Christ and what differentiates him as being our Lord and our King and why it was that he was so special, what it was about his embodiment, his coming into the world, into the flesh that made him unique and different from all others born of the flesh and born of woman. And so we're going to cover that in detail today. And um, let me, and if you have any questions, of course, place them into the chat room. I want to look up one thing real quick, and then we'll begin with the show. But uh, once again, happy Mother's Day to all the women of the world. Yahushua, Yahuwah, bless all of you for um, your unconditional giving uh, and just the fact that you love your children and you love the world in such a way that you are trying to raise children in goodness and bring them to to knowledge on, um, you know, even a lot of the things that we've been learning about here. And so I appreciate all of your fellowship, and I wish you all well. I pray for your health and your well-being, and, and for the fathers of the world, too, because I know that many of you have also uh, done and accepted that mother role in in raising your children, especially in this generation where we find the family being so fragmented and, and uh, purposely destroyed because it was an agenda. The the CIA and a lot of the intelligence agencies, um, uh, the movement, even with um, you know with the uh, the not the woman's rights but the uh the feminism um and and a lot of what was behind that movement was to fragment and to, to destroy uh the family and they certainly have done uh, a really good job on that because now we we find that a lot of children are raised either without mothers or without fathers and I'm so grateful that you know I was raised by um, a mother and a father that were dedicated to each other and that were dedicated to providing the best for me as they could. And that was one of the reasons why they only had one child. Um, and both of them grew up in, pro- in poverty, and so they wanted to give me the best that they could and to give me the best chance and opportunity uh, for succeeding in this world. And so I honor my parents and give thanks to the Father and the Son for them. Um, And I just uh, pray for their, you know, their well-being. They've both since uh, parted from this world and have gone on to be with the, the Creator and the Son. And I do look forward to that day when I will be reunited with them and I uh, have the the chance to hug them once again and to thank them in a way that I may not have um, in this world. And for those of you that still uh, have your parents and your grandparents and your loved ones with you, don't overlook any moment. Honor them in every day hug them, tell them that you love them, share your emotions and your feelings and in 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 every moment of every day because you just never know when they will go on and, and depart from this world and and then you won't have that chance, that opportunity anymore. Say what you can with the time that you have, express your love and the fullness that you can. Um, And don't allow petty, uh, meaningless uh, differences or arguments to separate you from the love that you should share with one another, 
Uh, the commandments, you know, two of the major commandments of the ten are to honor our father and the mother, uh, to honor each other, uh, and to love one another and embrace each other in that love. As Christ he loves us, as the Father loves us, we should, you know, share that kind of love with with our parents and to 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 try to express that to them in the time that we have. And so I pray that all of you do that as well. All right. We're going to begin with John chapter 1 because this will set the premise for what I'm going to be going into. And for those of you that are familiar, uh, it, it basically describes how the Father and the Son are one and that Christ was special, that he was not just uh, a human, uh, that he preexisted even uh, the creation of the arch and the minor angels. And most people, you know, a lot of people think that um, he was just a man and that there's no possible way that he could have ever been born of a virgin, that that concept is just beyond them. But the reason that he was born of a virgin was to emphasize that he was special to the world and to also illustrate to humanity that his father is the creator that crafted and brought all things into being and that his life, his embodiment would be special to the world. And that's why it it was, and it says in the gospel, that the Father loved us so much that he would give his only begotten Son to die on the cross for our sins and to give us a chance for redemption and for salvation and a return to our first estate. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. All right. Oh, and, you know, I'll read just a little bit more because John, John the Baptist had a very special part to play in uh, the coming and the herald of Christ being incarnated into the flesh. Verse 6, there was a man sent forth from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own receiveth him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All right, we're going to go ahead and go into this in the chat, chat, the chat room. All right, I appreciate all of you that have joined us for this show. Uh, I send my love to all of you and, and thank you for your fellowship. All right. First, we're going to begin with the canon. We're going to lay the premise for the virgin birth from the scripture. I'm going to give you the scriptures. You can look them up for yourself. And then we're going to go into a couple of extra biblical texts, which will uh, bring extra detail onto this story, the story of the virgin birth. Beginning with Isaiah Chapter 7, verse 14, it says this. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son 
and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ, who was as follows, after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now, all of these references are going to be very important to the stories that I'm about to bring forth. Matthew Chapter 1, verse 19 through 25. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, The virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. All right, next verse and chapter will be from Luke, uh, chapter 1, verse 30 through 37. And right before this, this these particular verses, uh, the story of Elizabeth and John the Baptist is given. Because, again, as I said, John the Baptist was very important in that he would be the reincarnated uh, spirit of Elijah, and this is a unique um, it's a unique story as far as John the Baptist and his connections with Elijah, because most of the Old Testament prophets are, uh, even though they were known by the Father and Son. They were from. They were embodied in the flesh only once, but with John the Baptist, there seems to be um, a twist to his story in that Elijah, one of the Old Testament prophets, is said to be the incarnated John the Baptist, which is a very unusual occurrence, and it's a story that I cover in full detail in the next book that I'm about to release, Skyfall, because I talk about in great depth and detail about incarnation and reincarnation in that book. And uh, and I document this story because it's one of those that um, is very unusual as far as how, how Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, uh, where it speaks about it is given unto man uh, wants to die and then judgment, and so um, and and I it, I should have that book turned into tape publishing in about one week's time. I'm just adding some final edits, and then it will be released. And um, I think uh, I think it will it will bless your lives for those of you that uh, take the time to read it. All right, continuing. Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 37. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be possible. Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist. All right, continuing. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. One final passage from Luke, and then we're going to go into two other texts which are going to uh, bring greater light to this incredible story of the virgin birth and the incarnation of God into the form of a man. Luke chapter 2, verse 4 through 7. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. All right. Now we're going to go into the story of how it was that Joseph came to be the wife of Mary. Um, uh, More, a little bit more on Mary, and and let me go ahead and provide you that link as well. Let me look it up for you so that you can have it for yourself. Uh, What we're about to go into is called the Protovangelium of James. And it has to do with the infancy gospels, the stories of Christ uh, when he was a child. And there's many of them if you actually read into them and study them in full. I'm going to paste the link into the chat room for those that would like to read more and know more uh, and to study this uh, for yourself. Uh, Because also Mary, her parents, uh, Anna and and Joachim, Joachim, Anna was barren for a long, long time. And they were even made fun of because they were not able to have children. And they, um, all of the other people of Israel, uh, they thought that they were cursed because, you know, Anna could not have children. And the father, he often does this, even in the case of Abraham and Sarah. You know, there's been many times where uh, those that have been barren have conceived in their old age as a sign of the special nature, the special character, and the role in the mission that their children would have. And so 
it's the same thing as the story of Mary in that uh, her parents were also barren. And so I'm going to read a little bit about that story to let tell you about the early um, the prayers that were put forth to to bring forth Mary and how she was a special child and how she would be chosen to be um, the the mother and the vessel of God coming into flesh embodiment and how special she was as a person herself. And this is, you know, I'm really glad that this this show aligned up with Mother's Day and that, you know, we can honor Mary, uh, the mother of our Lord and King, in, in this way as well. But I would also state, uh, especially for those that, you know, are Catholic and follow the Catholic way, that uh, you, you shouldn't... Um, Pray, you know, and even though it's, you know, it's totally okay to honor Mary, um, but that she was, she was still a human and that she was born of a woman and that in prayer, we should pray to the Father or to the Son because they are God incarnate. The Father and the Son are one and that they are the ones that have power and authority to answer our prayers and that worshiping Mary is a form of idolatry and that um it's something that you know we're not we're not supposed to put, partake of that we should worship the father and the son and bow before no one else so I just wanted to emphasize that all right, going into the story of Mary, uh, this is from the Protovangelion of James, and I'm going to begin with verse 4, and it says this. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by, saying, Anna, Anna, the Lord hath heard thy prayer, and thou shalt conceive and shall bring forth, and thy seed shall be spoken of in all the world. And Anna said, As the Lord my God liveth, if I beget either male or female, I will bring it as a gift to the Lord my God, and it shall minister to him in the holy things all the days of its life. And behold, two angels came saying to her, Behold, Joachim, thy husband, is coming with his flock. For an angel of the Lord went down to him, saying, Joachim, Joachim, the Lord God hath heard thy prayer. Go down hence, for behold, thy wife Anna shall conceive. And Joachim went down and called his shepherds, saying, Bring me hither ten she-lambs without spot or blemish. And they shall be for the Lord my God. And bring me twelve tender cows, and they shall be for the priests and the elders, and a hundred goats for all the people. And behold, Joachim came with his flocks, and Anna stood by the gate, and saw Joachim coming, and she ran unto him, and hung upon his neck, saying, Now I know that the Lord God hath blessed me exceedingly, for behold, the widow no longer a widow, the widow no longer a widow, and I, the childless, shall conceive. And Joachim rested the first day in his house. And on the following day, he brought his offering, saying, In himself, if the Lord God hath been rendered gracious to me, the plate on the priest's forehead will make it manifest to me. And Joachim brought his offerings and observed attentively the priest's plate when he went up to the altar of the Lord and he saw no sin in himself. And Joachim said, Now I know that the Lord has been gracious unto me and has remind, 
remitted all of my sins. And he went down from the temple of the Lord, justified, and departed to his own house. And her months were fulfilled, and in the ninth month, Anna brought forth. And she said to the midwife, What have I brought forth? And she said, A girl. And said, Anna, my soul has been magnified this day. And she laid her down, and the days having been fulfilled, Anna was purified and gave the breast to the child and called her name Mary. Verse 6. And the child grew strong day by day, and when she was six months old, her mother set her on the ground to try whether she could stand, and she walked seven steps and came into her bosom. And she snatched her up, saying, As the Lord my God liveth, thou shalt not walk on this earth until I bring thee into the temple of the Lord. And she made a sanctuary in a bedchamber and allowed nothing common or unclean to pass through her. She called the undefiled daughters of the Hebrews, and they led her astray. And when she was a year old, Joachim made a great feast and invited the priests and the scribes and the elders and all the people of Israel. And Joachim brought the child to the priests, and they blessed her, saying, O God of our fathers, Bless this child and give her an everlasting name to be named in all generations. And all the people said, so be it. So be it. Amen. And he brought her to the chief priest and they blessed her saying, O God, most high, look upon this child and bless her with the utmost blessing, which shall be forever. And a mother snatched her up and took her into the sanctuary of her bedchamber and gave her the breast. And Anna made a song to the Lord God, saying, I will sing a song to the Lord my God, for he hath looked upon me and hath taken away the reproach of mine enemies. And the Lord my God hath given the fruit of his righteousness, singular in its kind and richly endowed before him. Who will tell the sons of Reuben that Anna gives suck? Hear, hear, ye twelve tribes of Israel, that Anna gives suck. She laid her to rest in the bedchamber of her sanctuary and went out and ministered unto them. And when the supper was ended, they went down rejoicing and glorifying the God of Israel. And her months were added to child. The child was two years old, and Joachim said, Let us take her to the temple of the Lord, that we may pay the vow that we have vowed, lest perchance the Lord send to us, and our offerings be not received. And Anna said, Let us wait for the third year, in order that the child may not seek for father or mother. And Joachim said, So let us wait. And the child was three years old, and Joachim said, Invite the daughters of the Hebrews that are undefiled, and let them take each a lamp, and let them stand with the lamps burning, that the child may not turn back, and her heart be captivated from the temple of the Lord. And they did so until they went up into the temple of the Lord, and the priest received her, and kissed her, and blessed her, saying, The Lord has magnified that name in all generations. In thee, on the last of the days, the Lord will manifest his redemption to the sons of Israel. And he set her down upon the third step of the altar, and the Lord God sent grace upon her, and she danced with her feet, and all the house of Israel loved her. Verse 8. Now we're getting quickly to the story of uh, Joseph's betrothal. And the reason why I wanted to read all of this information about Mary is to help you to understand that Joseph being, you know, being chosen, how it was that he was also chosen by the Holy Spirit to be the guardian of Mary. 
and that he was already an elderly and a widowed man, that he had already children uh, that were as old as Mary, if not older, uh, and that the children, the brothers and the sisters that are cited in the New Testament as being uh, the siblings of Christ, they were not born of Mary. Mary was a virgin even after conceiving Christ. And this story will also confirm that as well. And so she remained a virgin the entirety of her life. And the only child that she brought forth was Christ and that uh, it was a special birth and conception and deliverance. And we'll get to that part of the story very soon. But I I just wanted to uh, bring this forth so that you would understand that she was a virgin and that she never knew a man. All right, continuing. And her parents went down marveling and praising the Lord God because the child hath not turned back. And Mary was in the temple of the Lord as if she were a dove that dwelt there. She received food from the hand of an angel. And when she was 12 years old, there was held a council of the priests saying, Behold, Mary has reached the age of 12 years in the temple of the Lord. What then shall we do with her? Test, lest perchance she defile the sanctuary of the Lord. And they said to the high priest, Thou standest by the altar of the Lord. Go in and pray concerning her. And whatever the Lord shall manifest unto thee, that also will we do. And the high priest went in, taking the robe with the twelve bells, into the Holy of Holies. And he prayed concerning her. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, saying unto him, Zacharias, Zacharias, for those that don't know, Zacharias is the father of John the Baptist. His wife is Elizabeth. Go out and assemble the widowers of the people. Now pay attention here. He says, go out and assemble the widowers of the people and let them bring each his rod. And to whomsoever the Lord shall show a sign, His wife shall she be. And the heralds went out through all the circuit of Judea, and the trumpet of the Lord sounded, and all ran. Verse 9. And Joseph, throwing away his axe, went out to meet them. And when they had assembled, they went away to the high priest, taking with them their rods. And he taking the rods of all of them, entered into the temple and prayed. And having ended his prayer, he took the rods and came out and gave them to them. But there was no sign in them. And Joseph took his rod last. And behold, a dove came out of the rod and flew upon Joseph's head. And the priest said to Joseph, Thou hast been chosen by lot to take into thy keeping the virgin of the Lord. But Joseph refused, saying, I have children, and I am an old man, and she is a young girl. I am afraid, lest I become a laughingstock to the sons of Israel. And the priest said to Joseph, Fear the Lord thy God, and remember what the Lord did to Dathan and to Abiram and Korah, how the earth opened and they were swallowed up on account of their contradiction. And now fear, O Joseph, lest the same things happen in thy house. And Joseph was afraid and took her into his keeping. And Joseph said to Mary, Behold, I have received thee from the temple of the Lord. And now I leave thee in my house and go away to build my buildings, and I shall come to thee. 
the Lord will protect thee. All right, I need to comment here. Everybody knows that Joseph was a carpenter, that he was a a, a, a builder, that he, not only did he build, um, you know, uh, that he constructed like houses and uh, different buildings of a sort, but that he also um, built like thrones, you know, like the and different wood uh, woodwork. Uh, and so that's why it was that, you know, everybody says that Christ was a carpenter, um, but that, you know, it was because his father was a, a, a carpenter uh, or a worker of wood. All right, but notice in this particular passage, uh, Joseph says, uh, I have children and I am an old man and she is a young girl. So exactly how old he was, we we don't know. But he was widowed. And so, you know, in that day and age, they didn't just divorce. And we don't know exactly what happened to his wife. But Joseph here him, himself declares that he is an old man. Uh, excuse me for just a minute. Okay, so we're going to continue on with the story. Uh, I'm going to just get to the part where Joseph returns back. He leaves for six months to go out and to do his work. And when he comes back, he finds Mary pregnant. And and this freaks him out. Um and the reason I emphasize the story, well, you'll know when I get there, I'll comment um, verse 10. And there was a council of the priests saying, let us make a veil for the temple of the Lord. And the priest said, call to me the undefiled virgins of the family of David. And the officers went away and sought and found seven virgins. The priest remembered the child Mary, that she was of the family of David. And undefiled before God. And the officers went away and brought her. And they brought them into the temple of the Lord. And the priest said, Choose for me by lot who shall spin the gold and the white and the fine linen and the silk and the blue and the scarlet and the true purple. And the true purple and the scarlet fell to the lot of Mary. And she took them and went away to her house. And at that time, Zacharias was dumb, and Samuel was in his place until the time that Zacharias spake. And Mary took the scarlet and span it. And she took the pitcher and went out to fill it with water, and behold, a voice sang, Hail, thou who hast received grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. She looked around on the right hand and on the left to see whence this voice came. She went away, trembling to her house, and put down the pitcher. And taking the purple, she sat down on her seat and drew it out. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before her, saying, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found grace before the Lord of all and thou shalt conceive according to his word. And she hearing reasoned with herself, saying, Shall I conceive by the Lord, the living God? And shall I bring forth as every woman brings forth? And the angel of the Lord said, Not so, Mary, for the power of the Lord shall overshadow thee. Wherefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Most High. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And Mary said, Behold, the servant of the Lord before his face, let it be unto me according to thy word. All right. Uh, Two more passages, and then we're going to go into the story. 
of her conception. She made the purple and the scarlet and took them to the priest, and the priest blessed her and said, Mary, the Lord God hath magnified thy name, and thou shalt be blessed in all generations of the earth. And Mary, with great joy, went away to Elizabeth, her kinswoman, knocked at the door, and when Elizabeth heard her, she threw away the skull and ran to the door and opened it. And seeing Mary, she blessed her and said, Whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, that which is in me leaped and blessed thee. But Mary had forgotten the mysteries of which the archangel Gabriel had spoken and gazed up into heaven and said, Who am I, O Lord, that all the generations of the earth should bless me? She remained there three months with Elizabeth, and day by day she grew bigger. And Mary, being afraid, went away to her own house and hid herself from the sons of Israel. And she was 16 years old when these mysteries happened. All right, continuing. This is the important passage. And she was in her sixth month, and behold, Joseph came back from his building. And entering into his house, he discovered that she was big with child. He smote his face and threw himself on the ground upon the sackcloth and wept bitterly, saying, With what face shall I look upon the Lord my God? And what prayer shall I make about this maiden? Because I received her a virgin out of the temple of the Lord, and I have not watched over her. Who is it that hath hunted me down, who has done this evil thing in my house and defiled the virgin? Has not the history of Adam been repeated in me? For just as Adam was in the hour of his singing praise, the serpent came and found Eve alone and completely deceived her. So it has happened to me also. And Joseph stood up from the sackcloth and called Mary, said to her, O oh, thou who hast been cared for by God, why hast thou done this and forgotten the Lord thy God? Why hast thou brought low thy soul, thou that thou wast brought up in the Holy of Holies and that didst receive food from the hand of an angel. She wept bitterly, saying, I am innocent and have known no man. And Joseph said to her, Whence then is that which is in thy womb? And she said, As the Lord my God liveth, I do not know whence it is to me. All right, the important part of this story. And those of, of you that are familiar with my work, I, I've, I've cited this particular passage previously. Um, and this one's a little bit different from the other interpretations that I've read from. And I'm actually going to bring forth this particular passage in a different interpretation because... It gives a little bit more insight. Let me find it. Okay, here it is. It says this. All right. For I received her out of the temple of the Lord my God, a virgin, and hath not kept her safe. Who is he that hath ensnared me? Who hath done this evil thing in mine house and hath defiled the virgin is not the story of Adam repeated in me for at the hour of his giving thanks the serpent came and found Eve alone and deceived her so hath it befallen me also so in this story Joseph is saying like everybody knew like all the people of his time knew that Eve was defiled by the serpent and that just as Mary had you know he had come home in the, the, his sixth month after being out and working in the field and working 
on you know his different construction projects, he came home and found Mary pregnant. And so he's saying here, hath not the story of Adam been repeated in me? Meaning that Adam also had found Eve pregnant with the serpent's child who was Cain, the firstborn of the the evil one. Uh, that's why it says in John that Cain is of the wicked one. That's why it says in Matthew chapter 13 that um that uh, that the the tares uh, are the children of the devil. That he absolutely has his own bloodline. It references in Isaiah chapter fourteen as um, Lucifer or you know Satan as being the abominable branch uh, that brought forth unsavory fruit. That these children, the children of the wicked one, the you know, it references in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. This story is further confirmation as to, you know, the whole premise of my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain, of which I get harassed and beat up on uh, for, you know, simply bringing this information out. And so, there you go. Further confirmation. Let me check the chat room and then we'll continue on. All right. And I appreciate everybody being cordial and sharing with each other. Uh... Yeah, I don't see questions. I just see commentary. So, oh wait, there must. I think there might have been one question. Let me check this real quick. Okay, no, it wasn't a question. All right, we're going to continue on because I've I've got two more things that I want to try to cover in the short time that we have remaining. All right. We're going to skip now to the last sentence of verse 17. In this story that we're about to go into, uh, Joseph is with Mary. They're in the desert, and she's about to give birth. And this story will give you, it's a little bit graphic, and so I do want to give you a little warning. But um, this story will give you confirmation that Mary was a virgin after the conception of Christ. All right. Going into the story. Again, this is from the Protoevangelion of James. And he took her down from off the ass and said to her, Whither shall I lead thee and cover thy disgrace? For the place is desert. And he found a cave there and led her into it. And leaving his two sons beside her, he went out to seek a midwife in the district of Bethlehem. And I, Joseph, was walking and was not walking. And I looked up into the sky and saw the sky astonished. And I looked up to the pole of the heavens and saw it standing, and the birds of the air keeping still. And I looked down upon the earth, and I saw a trough lying, and were people reclining, and their hands were in the trough. And those that were eating did not eat, and those that were rising did not carry it up. And those that were conveying anything to their mouths did not convey it. But the faces of all were looking upward. And I saw the sheep walking, and the sheep stood still. And the shepherd raised his hand to strike them. And his hand remained up, and I looked upon the current of the river. And I saw the mouths of the kids resting on the water and not drinking. And all things in a moment were driven from their course. So we know that something unusual is going on. 
and they're looking up into the sky um, because there's a sign, uh, so some kind of heavenly sign about the birth of Christ. And it was the same thing that the three magi were following that led them to where Christ was. Okay, now about the midwife. And I saw a woman coming down from the hill country, and she said to me, O oh man, whither art thou going? And I said, I am seeking a Hebrew midwife. She answered and said unto me, Art thou of Israel? And I said to her, Yes. And she said, And who is it that is bringing forth in the cave? And I said, A woman betrothed to me. And she said to me, Is she not thy wife? And I said to her, It is Mary that was reared in the temple of the Lord. And I attained her by lot as my wife. And yet she is not my wife, but hath conceived of the Holy Spirit. And the midwife said to him, Is this true? And Joseph said to her, Come and see. And the midwife went away with him, and they stood in the place of the cave. And behold, a luminous cloud overshadowed the cave. And the midwife said, My soul has been magnified this day, because mine eyes have seen strange things, because salvation has been brought forth to Israel. And immediately... The cloud disappeared out of the cave, and a great light shone in the cave, so that the eyes could not bear it. And a little, that light gradually decreased until the infant appeared and went and took the breast from his mother Mary. And the midwife cried out and said, This is a great day to me because I have seen this strange sight. And the midwife went forth out of the cave, and Salome met her, and she said to her, Salome, Salome, I have a strange sight to relate to thee. A virgin has brought forth a thing which her nature admits not of. Then said Salome, As the Lord my God liveth, unless I thrust in my finger and search the parts, I will not believe that a virgin has brought forth. Verse 20. And the midwife went in and said to Mary, Show thyself, for no small controversy has arisen about thee. And Salome put in her finger and cried out and said, Woe is me for mine iniquity and mine unbelief, because I have tempted the living God. And behold, my hand is dropping off as if it burned with fire. And she bent her knees before the Lord, saying, O oh God of my fathers, remember that I am the seed of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Do not make a show of me to the sons of Israel, but restore me to the poor. For thou knowest, O Lord, that in thy name I have performed my services, and that I have received my reward at thy hand. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by her, saying to her, Salome, Salome, the Lord hath heard thee. Put thy hand to the infant and carry it, and thou wilt have safety and joy. And Siloam went and carried it, saying, I will worship him, because a great king has been born to Israel. And behold, Siloam was immediately cured. She went forth out of the cave justified, and behold a voice saying, Siloam, Siloam. Tell not the strange things thou, thou hast seen until the child has come into Jerusalem. And behold, Joseph was ready to go into Judea. There was a great commotion in Bethlehem of Judea. For Magi came, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod heard, he was much disturbed and sent officers to the Magi. And he sent for the priests and examined them, saying, How is it written about the Christ? Where is he to be born? And they said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written. And he sent them away, and he examined the Magi, saying to them, 
What sign have you seen in reference to the king that has been born? And the Magi said, We have seen a star of great size shining among the stars and obscuring their light, so that the stars did not appear, and we thus knew that a king has been born to Israel. We have come to worship him. And Herod said, Go and seek him, and if you find him, let me know in order that I also may go and worship him. And the Magi went out, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them until they came to the cave, and it stood over the top of the cave. And the Magi saw the infant with his mother Mary, and they brought forth from their bag gold and frankincense and myrrh, And having been warned by the angel not to go into Judea, that they went into their own country by another road. All right. I'm going to stop here with this story, and I'm going to to pick up with the ascension of Isaiah because I want to bring one more story forward to give confirmation as to the uh, of the the Son being God incarnate as Christ being the incarnation of the Most High. Uh, but one thing I do want to comment on is that many people say that the star which led the Magi, they believe it to be a UFO. Now, I'm in disagreement with this because I I, I think, you know, that the fallen angels, are the ones that are behind the phenomena uh, of the UFO, um, the the high technology that is used in such way. Now, the cherubim, which are living, um, you know, in that, that they were, that their living craft that the father uh, utilizes in his own way, and that Ezekiel was witness to one of these particular things, that certainly the father and the son can do anything that they wish, but the the fallen angels use technology to mimic um, the father and the son. I would refer to, oh gosh, I cannot remember the name of the documentary, but, oh yes, I, I know it now. Watch the video and watch the, the the movie that has been done on the star of Bethlehem because it's been confirmed that what this phenomenon was was the planet Jupiter that Jupiter was utilized in a way uh, and and it was it was a sign and it was a, a phenomenon that occurred during the time of Christ and this has all been confirmed with the Stellarium, the Starry Night, the the astrological programs uh, that show, you know, where the stars and the planets were uh, on any given day, going, you know, all the way back into the past and into the future, and that uh, this lawyer Richard Larson, in this video in this program, the Star of Bethlehem, he shows you from, you know, from this astronomy program exactly what the phenomenon was and what occurred that night and how it was that it led the Magi to Bethlehem. And so please refer to that for further detail on this particular story. All right, now I'm going to go into quickly because I'm running out of time. The ascension of Isaiah. Because Isaiah, you know, he was one of the Old Testament prophets that spoke about how Christ was going to come in, uh, be born of a virgin, and that his name would be Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Well, what people don't realize is that Isaiah was also taken up into the heavens to be a witness to Christ coming into the flesh, and that um, he was shown all of this prior to, you know, his being born of the flesh. And that he witnessed not only his descent through the heavens to be born of a virgin, but that he was in his vision shown that after his uh, crucifixion that he would 
you know, uh, be resurrected after three days, that he would remain on the earth for a period of time to be a witness and that he would resurrect with him uh, many of the patriarchs to also give testi- testimony as to his resurrection. Oh, gosh, I'm a, I don't know if I'll have time. Um, let me just go ahead and go into the story. Ascension of Isaiah, and this is from chapters 10 and 11. I'm going to try to read what I can, beginning with verse 6, chapter 10. And I heard the angel who conducted me, and he said, This is the Most High of the High Ones, dwelling in the Holy World and resting in His Holy One, who will be called by the Holy Spirit through the lips of the righteous, the Father of the Lord. And I heard the voice of the Most High, the Father of my Lord, saying to my Lord Christ, who will be called Jesus, Go forth and descend through all the heavens, and thou wilt descend to the firmament and that world, to the angel and shield thou wilt descend, but to Hazelwell thou wilt not go. And thou wilt become like unto the likeness of all who are in the five heavens. And thou wilt be careful to become like the form of the angels of the firmament and the angels also who are in Sheol. And none of the angels of that world shall know that thou art with me of the seven heavens and of their angels. And they shall not know that thou art with me till with a loud voice I have called to the heavens and their angels and their lights, even unto the sixth heaven, in order that you may just judge and destroy the princes and angels and gods of that world and the world that is dominated by them. For they have denied me and said, we alone are and there is none beside us. And afterwards, from the angels of death, thou wilt ascend to thy place and thou wilt not be transformed in each heaven, but in glory wilt thou ascend and sit on my right hand. And thereupon the princes and powers of that world will worship thee. These commands I heard the great glory giving to my Lord. And so I saw my Lord go forth from the seventh heaven into the sixth heaven. And the angel who conducted me from this world was with me and said unto me, Understand, Isaiah, and see the transformation and descent of the Lord will appear. And I saw, and when the angels saw him, thereupon those in the sixth heaven praised and laughed and lauded him. For he had not been transformed after the shape of the angels there. And they praised him, and I also praised with them. And I saw when he descended into the fifth heaven, that in the fifth heaven he made himself like unto the form of the angels there. And they did not praise him nor worship him. For his form was like unto theirs. Just real quick. The angels from the fifth heaven down are the fallen angels. They are now not allowed to come uh, higher than the fifth heaven. And so that's why Christ is disguising himself as he goes through the lower five heavens so that they will not recognize that their Lord, uh, because they know Christ is the Son of God, that they don't recognize him descending to become the form of a man, incarnated into the body of flesh. Continuing. And I saw when he descended into the fifth heaven, that in the fifth heaven he made himself like unto the form of the angels there. They did not praise him or worship him, for his form was like unto theirs. Then he descended into the fourth heaven and made himself like unto the form of the angels there. When they saw him, they did not praise or laud him, for he was in the form like theirs. And again, I saw when he descended into the third heaven, and he made himself like unto the form of the angels in the third heaven. And those who kept the gate of the third heaven demanded the password. The Lord gave it to them in order that he should not be recognized. And when they saw him, they did not praise or laud him, for his form was like unto theirs. And again, I saw when he descended into the second heaven, and again he gave the password there. Those who kept the gate proceeded to man and the Lord to give. And I saw when he made himself like unto the form of the angels in the second heaven, they saw him, they did not praise him, for he was like a form unto theirs. 
And again, I saw when he descended into the first heaven, there was also, he also gave the password to this, those that kept the gate, and he made himself like into the form of the angels who were on the left of that throne. And they neither praised nor lauded him, for his form was like unto their form. But as for me, no one asked me on account of the angel who conducted me. And again he descended into the firmament where dwelleth the ruler of this world. He gave the password to those on the left, and his form was like theirs. They did not praise him there. But they were envying one another and fighting for their, for here there is power of evil and envying about trifles. And I saw when he descended and made himself like unto the angels of the air, he was like one of them. He, and he gave no password for one was plundering and doing violence to another. Chapter 11. After this I saw and the angel who spoke with me, he conducted me, said unto me, Understand, Isaiah, son of Amos, for this purpose have I been sent from God. And indeed, I saw a woman of the family of David, the prophet named Mary, and virgin. She was a spouse to a man named Joseph, a carpenter, and he also was of the seed in the family of the righteous David of Bethlehem, Judea. And he came into his lot, and when she was a spouse, she was found with child. And Joseph the carpenter was desirous to put her away. But the angel of the Spirit appeared in this world, and after that, Joseph did not put her away, but kept Mary and did not reveal this matter to anyone. And he did not approach Mary, but kept her as a holy virgin, though with child. He did not live with her for two months. And after two months of days, while Joseph was in his house, and Mary and his wife, but both alone. It came to pass that when they were alone, that Mary straightway looked with her eyes and saw a small babe, and she was astonished. And after she had been astonished, her womb was found a formerly before she had conceived. Oh, let me repeat this, because this gives confirmation of the Protoevangelium of James that I just read. Verse 9, chapter 11. After she had been astonished, her womb was found as formerly before she had conceived. And when her husband, Joseph, said unto her, What has astonished thee? His eyes were open, and he saw the infant and praised God, because into his portion God had come. And a voice came to them, Tell this vision to no one. And the story regarding the infant was noised abroad in Bethlehem. Some said, The Virgin Mary hath born a child before she was married two months. And many said, She has not born a child, nor has a midwife gone up to her, nor have we heard the cries of labor pains. And they were still blinded, respecting him. And they all knew regarding him, though they knew not whence he came whence he was. They took him and went to Nazareth in Galilee. And I saw, O Hezekiah and Joseph, my son, and I declared to the other prophets also who are standing by that this hath escaped all the heavens and all the princes and all the gods of this world. And I saw in Nazareth he sucked the breast as a babe and as is customary in order that he may not, may not be recognized. And when he had grown up, he worked great signs and wonders in the land of Israel, of Jerusalem. And after this, the adversary envied him and roused the children of Israel against him, not knowing who he was. And they delivered him to the king and crucified him. And he descended to the angel of Sheol. In Jerusalem, indeed, I was him. I saw him being crucified on a tree. And likewise, after the third day, rise again and remain days. And the angel who conducted me said, Understand, Isaiah, I saw when he sent out the twelve apostles and ascended. And I saw him, and he was in the firmament, but he had not changed himself into their form. And all the angels of the firmament and Satan saw him, and they worshipped. And there was much sorrow there 
while they said, How did our Lord descend in our midst, and we perceive not the glory which has been upon him, which we see has been upon him from the sixth heaven? And he ascended into the second heaven, and he did not transform himself. But all the angels who were on the right and on the left and thrown in the midst both worshipped him and praised him and said, How did our Lord escape while descending and we perceived it not? I'm going to skip to the to when he gets to the seventh heaven. Basically, all of them recognize him as Lord. Verse 32. And I saw how he ascended into the seventh heaven, and all the righteous and all the angels praised him. And then I saw him sit down on the right hand of that great glory whose glory I told you that I could not behold. And also the angel of the Holy Spirit I saw sitting on the left hand. And so you see how in this story that Isaiah saw Christ descend and take the form of the fallen angel so that he could not be recognized and that he came into and Isaiah saw um, saw him you know be born of the virgin and be suckled as a child and that he then assumed authority and Satan the adversary killed him murdered him crucified him had him crucified he descended down in the shield and took as I read in um, Christ in the show that I did on Christ's descent into hell, that that was the beginning of the first resurrection. That was when Christ took all of the souls of the patriarchs that had up until that time been born and died that were housed in Sheol. He took them into uh, back up into paradise and gave them to the angel Michael, and Michael then took them into paradise where they were allowed to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. And so you see, Christ was not any ordinary person, but he truly, as John chapter 1, of which I opened the show with, he was God incarnate, and that Mary also was special. And so with that, Again, I honor all of the mothers of the world. I give thanks for all that you have done, and I ask that the Father and the Son bless all of you, keep you all safe, lead and guide you in discernment. Read these books for yourself so you come to greater clarity. Till next Saturday, in Yahushua, in Yahuwah's name I pray. God bless all. Good night.